everybody and welcome back to Coral Bouquet Gallery. In this video I'm going to document the next step in my process where I take an already um, prepared canvas and I start collaging on the alcohol ink images that I've cut out of Yupo paper. So um, I've taken a photo already of exactly the way I want everything laid out. I always do this before I start gluing so that I don't forget and accidentally put it in the wrong spot. For this I'm going to be using a very cheap paintbrush. I usually buy packs at Michael's or somewhere else and I will use the cheapest possible brushes because we are going to be using Mod Podge to glue down our images. So let's begin. For this you really want to make sure you get a nice amount of Mod Podge on the surface and on the back of the alcohol ink or Prismacolor drawing or watercolor image that you plan to collage to the surface. Now with alcohol ink, because of the ink, when you start applying the glue, you really want to make sure that the alcohol ink is completely dried. These pieces specifically were drying for the last week or two and you can see even they are running just a little bit. So you have to be very careful. I really like to go over the edges quite a bit and make sure that it's not bubbling up anywhere and just kind of press out from the center to make sure that everything's flat. Alright, so um, if you're wondering what type of Mod Podge I'm using, I'm using the matte. And the reason is it dries clear, you don't have to see, I don't want anything glossy showing up in my picture, I just want it to be very flat. I also really prefer Mod Podge because glue itself has a tendency, I mean I've tried all kinds of things. I've tried using Elmer's glue, I've tried using hot glue, I've tried a lot of various types and I'm, I'm just saying from my personal experience Mod Podge has worked the best. It seems to hold the longest and it has a tendency to not mess up the design too much, the inks. One thing I have learned over the years with um, applying these images, I used to use the Uni Posca pins or the acrylic paint markers and I would already have the designs drawn onto the surface of the alcohol ink or whatever else I was collaging and that just always tended to be a little bit of a mistake. So just from my personal experience, I would advise if you plan to draw designs, I would wait until after you've done a layer of resin or you've put a layer of the Mod Podge and then some kind of seal and then you can draw on top of that if you don't want the image to bleed. Alright everyone, so um, now that everything has been glued down and collaged to the surface with the Mod Podge and it has dried, we are going to go ahead and start adding all of our embellishments. Now just so you know, normally I would not blow dry the glue, I would let that sit out and probably not touch it until the next day to make sure that it is 100% dry, there's nothing sticky, and the reason is I am going to be adding a little bit of glitter and I'm going to be adding things like rhinestones and these. Now, I'm not 100% on those. I have used them a couple of times at this point, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure that I love how they look. I'm still sort of trying to figure out how to incorporate them into my pieces. But I have an idea that I want to use right now, so I'm going to start off with the rhinestones because they're pretty easy to get down, and then we can start working with the glitter as soon as I'm done. All right, so what you're gonna see me doing now is I'm going to start applying the rhinestones. We're just gonna continue working with the Mod Podge. Um, you can do it one of two ways. Either you can do it like this, where you put the glue on the back and then apply it, or you can just try to glue a larger section, like you see me doing here, and apply it that way. I have a variety of sizes and I like to mix it up so that it's not all the same size. Then it starts to look sort of cartoonish, like an odd border. Um, but I love the impact that rhinestones and um, glitter has in my pieces. I've always really liked it. I went to 
college with an artist named John Shiro. And um, I still remember his pieces when we were in Block, and he did these really massive um, acrylic pour pieces. And for emphasis or impact, he grabbed um, rhinestones and different glittery objects, and he would glue them in certain spots. And I always thought that was really beautiful, and I've remembered that. So I like to incorporate that into my own work. So the reason this is my most fun part of the piece is because there really isn't a lot of thought that goes into this. Everything else I tend to plan out a bit much. And with this part of the piece, it's more just a feeling. You just go and add it wherever you feel like it would look nice. There's no planning to it. And um, I, I enjoy that part. So um, one question that I get asked a lot is how I seem to do so many pieces so quickly. And the answer is they're not done very quickly. They just appear to be because I'm always working on the different components at different times. So like I said before, I will have a number of these backgrounds just waiting for me in my office or in my garage or in storage somewhere. And I'll have a number of the alcohol ink papers just sitting around waiting to be cut up so that when I get an idea, it's very easy for me to just grab the necessary pieces that I think will work best together and start collaging everything, adding all of these little embellishments. And that process does go very quickly. I could easily, if I just was, you know, I had the time to sit and do it. I could easily do a painting in a day because I've already got everything ready to go. But the uh, process of getting everything ready is what really takes the most amount of time. All those different pieces that have to be ready. Okay, so at this step, um, I have all of the rhinestones that I want sort of outlining or going along the edge here of this shape. What I'm gonna do to fill in these glue parts is I'm going to add a little bit of glitter. Now I have a million different types of glitter, but I'm going to use a little bit of what's left for this canister. I believe I got it at Michael's for like 50% off. You just pour it on top, which is why it's so important that the rest of your canvas is totally dry, obviously. And I like to make a big old mess. I do reuse the glitter, obviously, because I feel guilty about using glitter because I know it's not necessarily the best for the environment. So I do try to reuse it as much as possible. And just shake it, make sure it gets really down in there. And what you're left with is something that looks like this. And then I will take that leftover glitter and put that back into a container to be used. If you don't mind, I'm gonna keep on working on it and then I'll bring you back when I've got a little bit more finished. Okay, so you can see I've added some more details on top of the glitter that I've added to the rhinestones, I've also added some little glitter circles on this area. I've added these little balls. This is the first time I've ever tried this product and I'm not 100% in love with it, but I do think it adds a nice texture to the canvas. So I'm gonna see how it looks once we pour the resin. I've also used some different colors of glitter. I used a little bit of this silver right here and one that has um, sort of like a rainbow effect. And then the last one that I use, which I'm not really happy with, is this. Again, this is the first time I've tried it. It's from um, Dick Blake Art Supplies. And it came in like this large, just grouping of different types of glitters. Um, these balls also came with it. And I don't love the effect that it has here, but again, it's texture. So we'll see what it looks like once we add the layer of resin. And then I can decide if I want to try and cover it up with some Uni Posca designs or if I want to keep it. So for now, this is a good place to stop. Go ahead and apply the first layer of resin and then we can start having more fun with drawing designs. Thanks guys and I hope you tune in for the next video to see the next step in my process.